Brothers and sisters, colleagues, friends, fellow workers, greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior. A warm welcome to this National Office Bearers Empowerment. Pastor Rudy and I, as you know, are conducting these workshops and empowerment in another region. And so hence, we are not able to be with you in person. Um, but it is so good for us to be together, to reaffirm acquaintances and people who are with us are working for the Lord. Thank you for making time to share your presence with us. Some of you have traveled very far. Let me record our sincere thanks and appreciation for all the efforts you've made to be here. I'm going to share a few thoughts today around Paul's encouragement to Timothy to stir up the spiritual gifts. And as another translation say, fan into flame the gift of God. In 2 Timothy 1 verse 6 we read, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying up my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. It's the New King James Version. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, of self-discipline. And I love the message, which in very simple English says, and the special gift of ministry you have received when I laid hands on you and prayed. Keep that ablaze on fire. God doesn't want us to be shy with his gifts, but to be bold, loving, and, sens and sensible. The intent of the gift Paul explained in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 5 to 7, there are differences of ministry, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works in all of us. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Yes, the gifts of the Spirit enables us to serve the church. The church must benefit from the operation of the gifts in the servants of the Lord. You and I are privileged to have this treasure in earthen vessels. The Lord has deposited into you and me that ability to be in His service and to make a difference in lives because of His gifts. The presence of life can take a toll on the manifestation of gifts. Why Timothy needed this reminder from Paul is not clear. But Paul deemed it fit to remind Timothy that despite the problems associated perhaps of his youthfulness, perhaps Timothy became somewhat intimidated by the opposition to both Paul and the gospel, even in ways uh, him being threatened. He became defensive. Perhaps he was ashamed at having to defend a prisoner. <laughs> and as Paul says, the foolishness in which they both preached about a despised and crucified Jesus. Yes, Paul in verse 4 remembers Timothy's tears. It therefore appears that Timothy was getting fearful, weary, and unsure of his call, and his spirit was sinking. 
So Paul wrote a strong word to revive him, reminding him that timidity has no place in God's service. God's servants don't need to fear because God gives us a spirit of power, a spirit of love and a spirit of self-discipline. These virtues supplied in abundance by the Holy Spirit should characterize Timothy. Paul urged him to be bold. When we allow people to intimidate us, we neutralize our effectiveness for God. Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And the power of the Holy Spirit can help us to overcome our fear about what people may say or do to us so that we can continue God's work. Paul reminds us when he says, I'm confident of this one thing, that he who started the work in you, he'll be faithful to complete. In telling Paul or Timothy to fan the flames, Paul was encouraging Timothy to persevere, to step boldly out in faith and proclaim the good news once again. And the Holy Spirit will go with him and give him power. Paul reminded Timothy of his journey of faith. Paul reminded him of his faith and how it came to him. Paul in essence told Timothy, I remember your faith, your sincere faith. It is that faith that first lived in Louise, your grandmother. In other words, Timothy, if you are feeling low today, if the presence of life gets hold of you. Timothy, if today you are lonely in your ministry, remember, you have an example of Louise. You knew Louise. You know what she went through, but God carried her. Remember your grandmother, but not only that. Remember your mother. Your mother who loved in faith and who handed it down to you. Paul reminds you today that the Lord of yesterday is the God of today. But the responsibility, Timothy, to stir up the gift is with the recipient of the gift. There's an important principle, uh, brothers and sisters, that I would like to articulate the way Paul tried to do it. Paul says, stir up the gift. The responsibility to fan into flame and keep the gift ablaze lies with the receiver of the gift. We have received the gift. We have the power of the Holy Spirit. We do not need to pray again for the Spirit. We need, don't need to pray again for the gifts. But we have the sacred duty imposed on us by God to guard the good deposit that was entrusted unto us. We must guard that deposit with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives within us. As the hymn says, and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. Second Timothy 1 verse 14. It also the duty, the sacred duty of the recipient to fully utilize the gift as intended by God. God doesn't want us to be shy with the gifts, but God wants us to be bold, be loving and sensible. Nobody can stir your gift the fire within you, like you can. Remember when God first unleashed his power into you, when you first became aware that the presence of God is in you, you could not wait to share. But the responsibility is yours because nobody can stir you up like you can do. 
Because if you depended on other people to stir you, as soon as they leave, you'll grow cold, you'll grow fearful, and you will be uncertain. To fan is a verb. Fanning the flame requires action. We are not passively waiting on external forces to force our flame. But he who is in us, hallelujah, the act of prayer, act of worship, praising the Lord will keep the fire ablaze. Remember what he has spoken to you. Preach to yourself if you have to. Sing to yourself if you have to. Pray to the loving God if you have to. Do what it takes to fan the flame. Don't allow the flame of God to diminish. It is, however, true that gifts can be neglected. As Paul warns in 1 Timothy 4, verse 14, do not let, let the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. When we neglect something, we are careless. When we neglect something, we abandon it. When we neglect something, we don't maintain it. When we neglect something, we can even forget it. I'm cautioning all of us today that sometimes we can become so used to the gift in us that it is just another facet of our lives. And then we treat it without due reference. Today, I urge all of us be aware of the preciousness of the gift of God in you. Never neglect what God has given you. Don't allow it to fall in disuse. But it was Paul's conviction that Timothy had genuine faith that led him to urge Timothy to fan his gift into an open flame. The phrase that Paul used, for this reason, is a reference of the possession of their genuine faith. Paul urging, set at the place, keep it on fire. The expression fan into flames describes the act of rekindling the embers of a dying fire. The command does not necessarily imply that Timothy has let his spiritual flame go out. But it's an appeal for a continual vigorous use of the spiritual gifts. We cannot be content with yesterday. We cannot contend with the past. But here Paul says to Timothy, in the face of my impending death, continue the use of the gifts. Paul urged the young minister to fan into flame or perhaps keep it at full flame. His God-given ability for the ministry. I'm reminded of the chorus that says, give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. More than ever before, this world needs the operation of the gifts of God. The world needs to be exposed to the power of God. The world needs to be exposed to the love of God that surpasses all understanding. But I'm here to remind us, if gifts are not frequently or properly used, and if it's you are not continuously replenished with a continued grace and power, from the Holy Spirit anointing, you will become powerless, useless, and fail in your purpose. Let me remind you that rekindling your gifts would involve fervent prayer 
obedience to God's word and demonstration of an act of faith. Timothy did not need new revelations. Neither did he need new gifts. He needed the courage and discipline to hang on to the trust and to use the gift he has already received. Sometimes when life has taken us a long journey, we're looking for new gifts. We're looking for new revelations. But like uh, the Lord asked Moses, what do you have in your hand? The Lord has equipped us over many years with gifts in our lives. Use it. And the more you use it, the more powerful the, your gift will become. But it will only be so if there's a constant and continuous supply of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That's what Paul prayed for. That's what Paul experienced as we read in Philippians 1 verse 19. For I know that whatever situation I find myself in, this will turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. He does not run short. The power of God is always present. There is an unlimited supply of His grace and His power. I am here to remind us today, whatever we're going through at whatever stage of our life, the power of God will carry us through and in Ephesians 3, verse 16 to 21, Paul puts it so beautifully, say, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through your spirit in your inner being. As we feed our bodies, as we nourish our bodies with delicious food, I pray that God will help us to feed our inner person, that God will help us to be strengthened from inside so that we can face whatever else is outside, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all God's holy people to grasp how wide, long and high and deep the love of Christ is. And to know that this love that surpasses all understanding that you may be filled with the measure of all the fullness of God. And then verse 20, now unto him. He has, in the preceding verses, he explained the power of God. And now he says to you, having explained to you who God is now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all what that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. I'm here to remind you God's power is working in you. Whether you sleep, whether you drive, whether you walk, whether you talk, God is with you. God is in you. The power of God has been released into you. Let me conclude. We read in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4, about all the gifts. The word of wisdom through the Spirit the word of knowledge through the same spirit, the gift of healings by the same spirit, the working of miracles through the same spirit, the prophecy, discerning of spirit, the different kinds of tongues, others to the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit works all things 
distributing to each individually as he wills. I pray that you will treasure your gift. I pray that in 2024, last year we said, keep the fire burning. This year we say, fan the flame of God. Now I pray that each and every one of us will fan into flame the gift of God to function in the spiritual realm in 2024 and to be equipped and empowered to minister with great zeal in and out of season in 2024 to revitalize our members as to the to be on fire with the Lord with oil in their lamps and burning until Jesus comes. God bless you.